Man Who Measured the Earth by Catherine Lasky. Illustrated by Kevin Hawks. The Librarian Who Measured the Earth. Illustrated by Kevin Hawks. Written by Catherine Lasky. To all children who dare to ask questions and continue to wonder, KL. To David, who is never satisfied, KH. More than 2,000 years ago, a very smart baby was born. His name was Eratosthenes. His parents were Greek. And they lived in Cyrene, a Greek city on the coast of Africa, in the country that is now called Libya. Even as a baby, Eratosthenes was curious and full of wonder. He would crawl across the kitchen floor to follow the path of ants. He wondered why there were beads of water on the cistern in the morning and in the evening when he looked out the window of his bedroom. He wondered why the stars stayed in the sky. And in the evening, when he looked out the window of his bedroom, he wondered why the stars stayed in the sky. When he could speak, he began asking hundreds and even thousands of questions. How far away is the sun? What is it made of? Where do the winds come from? What makes the stars move? Many of these questions his parents could not answer. When he was six years old, Eratosthenes went to school. It was called the gymnasium. Although the original meaning of the word was exercise ground, a gymnasium was also a school. Every morning, Eratosthenes, like other Greek boys, would be taken there by a family slave. At the gymnasium, there were no desks, no paper, and no pencils. And there were no girls. The girls stayed home and learned to cook and weave. Not many learned to read or write. Students sat on the floor, and instead of pens, they had styluses, sticks with one sharp end that were used for writing on tablets made of wax. Eratosthenes loved the gymnasium. It was a chance to ask more questions. In between asking questions, he and the other students learned reading, writing, arithmetic, music, and poetry. They even learned how to play the lyre and recite poetry at the same time. Eratosthenes was good at all of these subjects, and he was a real whiz in math. But his absolute favorite subject was geography. He bombarded his teachers with questions. How much of the earth is land? How high is the highest mountain? Is there a map of the earth? had learned all he could at the gymnasium, he, like many Greek boys, was sent to the famous Greek capital city to learn more. He said goodbye to his parents and his teachers, and he sailed to Athens. In Athens, he studied mathematics, philosophy, and science. There wasn't much time for the lyre or marbles, but there was always time for more questions.
In addition to being a great questioner, Eratosthenes was a terrific list maker. He liked making lists. It was a great way to organize information so it could be shared with other people. He made a list of all the important dates in the history of Greece. This kind of list is called a chronology. He also made a list of all the winners of the Olympic Games and he began to write books. He wrote one book on comedy, one book on history, and one on the constellations. Eratosthenes' name started to get around. Eratosthenes' name started to get around. When Eratosthenes was 30 years old, a king called Ptolemy III, the ruler of Egypt, asked him to serve as tutor for his son Philopater in Alexandria. Eratosthenes was ecstatic for a scholar like himself. Alexandria was the most exciting place to be. It was the center of all learning. It boasted a library and a museum that were the best in the world. All the great questions about science, literature, and history could be asked and researched in Alexandria. For indeed, this museum was not just a collection of things on exhibit. The word museum literally means place of the muses. In Greek mythology, the muses are the nine daughters of Zeus who help inspire artists and scientists. At the museum, there were laboratories and libraries, dining halls and private studios. There were special promenades that wound through quiet gardens for thoughtful strolls. Great minds were supposed to come to this place to read, study, and be inspired. And if the stomachs of these great minds started to growl with hunger, there were meals, porridge, fruit, nuts, 